Hello again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. I wanted to speak to you today uh, about a word and a vision that was given to me uh, several years ago. It was uh, back when uh, George Bush was still president. Uh, the elections were were on, and and we we had a whole host of candidates to replace him. Anyway, I was given this vision several years ago, and uh, I later, probably two two and a half years ago, posted it at Crazy Lamb, and even did a reading of it uh, on a short podcast a couple years ago. However. Uh, the events of the past few months, uh, the sacrifice in Benghazi, the whole issues of the growing issue, I guess I should say, of GMO, GMO foods uh, and the diseases that are spreading rapidly across our country like diabetes and, and uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for with the children? Uh, It'll come to me. Sometimes I get brain lock. It comes with old age. <laughs> the financial crisis, the campaign and the things we saw there, the witchcraft, and the almost satanic glee that we see across the upper echelon of our society and the man in the White House. All of these things and more, it just, I can't name them all. But all of these things combined with a strong urging from the spirit over the last few days as I was on the routes and, and driving late into the evening, most times during this holiday week, have led me to uh, bring this vision and this word back up and to repost it on the uh, Facebook page for the uh, for the site here the, the it said uh, on Facebook under Kanita's Ramble as it appears almost more imminent and more relevant to this moment in time now a thing was secretly brought to me in thoughts from a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth on a man. A shudder of dread came upon me, and in stunned silence did I behold the eagle's wings lifted on the four winds of heaven, and a word was accorded it. Thy way is in the sea, and thy path is in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known to thee. The waters saw and were afraid. Yea, even the deep trembled, for it was made to stand as a man and given a truth to feast upon. Lifting its standard high, it drew every man as a beacon in the storm. Thou hast heartily increased this nation and yet not increase the joy. For they take joy before thee solely, solely and only according to the joy of the harvest. And as men rejoice when they plunder and divide up the soil, the spoil, they have not known nor understood, for thou hast shut their eyes Thou hast shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they may not apprehend. They have left off to be wise, and will not frame their doings to turn unto God. For the spirit of whoredoms dances furiously in the midst of them. They have not known the Lord. Neither have they sought his way of peace. Fornication. Great of flesh have they committed with all who would. 
increasing their harlotry and lewdness to provoke Almighty God in His anger. Thou hast played the whore because thou was insatiable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them and could not be satisfied. Have ye not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? The axe shall boast itself against him that heweth therewith. Therefore, my friends, will he stretch out his hand over them and corrupt the land that the yield will not feed. Commotion and anguish will grip thy cities as thine abundance flees from thee as a mist in a mighty wind. And your power will he dash with a shake of a rock and a dagger left in your midst. Then will you be delivered up unto them that hate you and those who were ashamed of your ways will demand satisfaction. Calling a ravenous bird from a distant land, the man that will execute my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Amen. That's the vision, my friends, and the wording that was given to me as I tried to put it all back together. And when this first came, three, four years ago, whatever it was, four, I guess, I could clearly see some things. Other things uh, were uncertain, as as I say. The uh, the president was just a senator then, running for president, and uh, was actually uh, not expected to, uh, or not not favored to win the nomination. Uh, he was just one of so many candidates. Uh, many things have have happened that has, in the last week or so, as I as I was praying and, and seeking the Lord that brought this this vision back to me. It's printed here on the uh, website at Kanita's Ramble at Facebook. If you want to go there, you can copy it off and download it and look at it. There are a few things, though. It's clear, I think, in the vision. In the beginning, they were talking about the United States here. It's difficult for me to to actually try and explain this because it well, it's hard to explain. A vision is a very personal thing. And I feel like I'm almost exposing myself in some way by trying to take it apart and explain it. So I guess perhaps the best thing to do is just to leave it there and let it speak to you as it speaks to me. Now as far as I mentioned more relevant and more imminent, I think the relevance is obvious. I believe the dagger left behind was communism. I believe the ravenous bird from a different land is Obama. And if you listened in the campaign to his chief of staff in the White House, and she said, after the election, it's going to be payback. Is that anything other than those who were ashamed of their ways will demand satisfaction? 
these are a few of the things that made me see a sense of urgency that made me bring this to you. As far as imminence goes, you know, that's a very difficult thing to say. Zeph talks about it, uh, Brother Thomas. Uh, you know, the apostles, to a man, thought the return of our Lord was imminent. I expect most of them thought it would happen within their lifetimes. And, and I would be surprised if any of them thought it would take 2,000 years. So imminence is always a word we use with caution or should. But yet, I believe I will see this in my lifetime. And I'm 62 years old and will soon be 63. So I guess I will let him and his rest there. As far as what can we do? Well, quite frankly, my friends, very little we can do. As far as preventing the judgments of God or the plans of God. We are here to perform a task. And other than that, we're pretty much along for the ride. But God has not left us defenseless. He has not left us without hope. He has given us a way, a path, guidance, the great joy of our hearts that we have in the experience. But more than that, he's given us an antidote to all of this coming chaos that I see, that many people, perhaps all of us see, directly in our path, an antidote. And that will be the subject of the next podcast, my friends. Take this to heart, my friends. Until the next time, goodbye.